Good morning, welcome to That's My Farm. I'm Jim Schroyer, your host, and we're in Pottawatomie County near Oldsburg, Kansas, on the Craig and Amy Good Farm. And here they've done things a little bit different. They're basically a niche operation that's integrated pigs, cattle, and row crops. So stay with us, we'll be right back. Closed captioning brought to you by Kansas Soybean Commission. The Soybean Checkoff, progress, powered by Kansas farmers. American innovation is being driven in places you might not expect by people like Brent Hayek, an Oklahoma family farmer who recently set a world land speed record in a Ford Super Duty pickup truck powered by renewable B20 biodiesel. Advanced performance is here, now, putting America on the fast track to more jobs and energy independence. Biodiesel, America's advanced biofuel. That's My Farm is brought to you in part by Tall Grass Commodities, big enough to serve, small enough to care. Good morning, folks. Welcome to That's My Farm. I'm Jim Schroyer, your host, and we're in luck because we're in Pottawatomie County near the booming metropolis of Oldsburg, and we happen to have Craig Good of Craig and Amy Good Farms with us this morning. And uh, Craig, uh, thanks for thanks for joining the show with us and this morning. And uh, uh, you know you've got a great operation here, and we got a nice late summer, early fall day. So uh, kind of tell us a little bit about the your your operation, how you got started, and, okay. and kind of where where we're headed. Yeah, Jim, uh, we're glad glad that you're here. Um, we uh, uh, I grew up uh, near Manhattan. Uh, my family actually didn't farm. My father was in the animal science department at Kansas State University, sure. mm -hmm. but I had a strong interest in agriculture, particularly animal agriculture. And we uh, in 1961, my father started a purebred Angus herd which we continue to, the, to this day selling uh, purebred Angus breeding stock. Upon graduation from Kansas State University in 1975 with an animal science degree, uh, I worked for another producer that sold purebred uh, breeding stock in, uh, uh, of Durocks and Yorkshires. And I developed a strong interest in the hog business at that time. And so in 1981, Amy and I had a chance to come up to our farm here where that we've had since the, the the 60s, right. and um, we started a purebred seed stock sales and diversified farming operation with cattle, mm -hmm. uh, purebred cattle, as well as uh, the cropping industry, the part the side of it as well, and we continue that today. Right. You've got, you're up here in these hills, and uh, this ground up here is a little tough. You know, it's too wet in the morning and too dry in the afternoon, so you have to farm it over, over lunch hour pretty much, <laughs> sure. but you've gone from a, a uh, regular till, conventional tillage to no-till. Uh, you've been in no-till for over 20 years now. Yeah, Jim, our first uh, first no-till experience was back in 1984. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, the reason I did it was I was uh, sick and tired of working the ground and <laughs> it was either too wet or too dry, like you say. Uh -huh. And then after I would plant, back then a uh, neighbor had a four-row lister that he listed my listed Milo in and as you know you throw up a ridge and oh yeah we'd get about a three inch rain right afterwards and it would all come down into the row mm -hmm. cover the Milo up too deep and we would have to be replanting and after replanting and replanting and watching what little topsoil that we do have go down the terrace channel and out the outlets mm -hmm. uh, I decided we had to do something different so that's when we had a neighbor that had a no-till planter and we we started actually we sprayed out some alfalfa ground and no-tilled milo into alfalfa and that worked pretty well for you and been there ever since and overall it's been a very positive experience but you know you're kind of a uh, this isn't an insult but you're kind of a throwback i mean we, we've come from the age you know grandparents way back when the, the farm was integrated you had crops you had you had livestock all sorts of livestock and then we went into a you're either pr uh, uh, Growing crops or you're growing livestock, but you've kind of got the whole you've kind of got the whole thing. Right. So so you're basically um, 
I know you sell some of your crops, but a lot of your crops go into the animals. Yeah, uh, we sell our, the only thing that we sell uh, as far as crop production is mm -hmm. our soybeans. Right. And then we turn right around and haul back, you know, we sell Soybean our beans meal. and, and b b bring back either bean meal or grain. Mm -hmm. And so I feel like, you know, and Dad always was a big into this, how a crop and livestock operation, there's a certain, over the years, back, back in his generation, even before that, where there's a real synergy and a, a, a symbiotic relationship between the crops and the livestock. Right. Because the livestock produce a, a byproduct mm -hmm. that can go onto the fields and then the fields produce something for the animals to eat. That byproduct being manure. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. right. Yeah. That's the best fertilizer <laughs> there you out go. there. That's the best fertilizer. Well, hey, don't go away, Craig. Uh, and you folks at home, don't go away. We'll be right back after these words. Grass Commodities offers producers bulk commodities at a reasonable price with reliable service throughout the whole Midwest. To find out more about Tall Grass Commodities, visit tallgrass.us or call 785-494-8484. National Bank Ag Professional. You'll be a good company. They'll help you track expense lines, manage variable input costs, assess ground agreements, pick a crop protection plan. These times demand Ag Professionals. Central National Bank. You could profit from what they know. Ag operations run better on Central Time. Central National Bank. Money for life. Member FDIC in your hometown since 1884. The Kansas Wheat Innovation Center in Manhattan is rediscovering ways to get improved varieties and new genetics in the hands of farmers faster. Grower-led and checkoff-funded research initiatives are bringing about positive change. This grassroots leadership provides a strong voice in Topeka and Washington, D.C. Now is the time to partner with Kansas Wheat in moving wheat forward. Kansas Wheat Commission and Kansas Association of Wheat Growers, farmers investing in their future and yours. Log on to rediscoverwheat.org. That's My Farm is brought to you in part by Tall Grass Commodities. Big enough to serve, small enough to care. Welcome back, folks, So That's My Farm. I'm Jim Schroyer, the host, and with us we have Craig Good up by Oldsburg. And uh, Craig, we were talking a bit ago about the, the whole integrated operation, and I think it's really interesting about the, the pig or swine operation. So, you know, you were doing well for a long time, so what, what happened? Jim, you know, back uh, we were in the breeding stock business and selling boars and gilts, and we were selling over 200 boars a year. Right. And 98, 99, if anybody was around then in the pig industry, uh, it was very uh, it tanked. Uh, cataclysmic uh, occurrence. Right. It 10 cents a pound depression type things. We lost lots of producers. Right. And that's when really this industry started to uh, to uh, seg congregate into larger operations. Right. After that, especially. Um, but anyway, we could see that we either we were going to have to get out, or we needed to find some way because most of my clients, the people that bought breeding stock from us, they're were, out of business. Out of business, right. yeah. Or so quit, what? Quit so, raising pigs. so what happened? So we went. Uh, we, we we thought we wanted to stay raising pigs. We didn't want to get big. We could have gotten big and tried to compete that way. Right. But we chose. We went to the Ag Innovation Center at K State, right. and Dr. Vincent de Montarboadu. Mm -hmm. And he was working with a startup company from New York City called Heritage Foods USA. Right, right. And he connected us with them. Uh huh. And we started with them on a very small way. They were just getting started. Their purpose was to try to to save smaller family farms, and to also they wanted to preserve some of the rare breeds or some of the pure breeds of livestock. Right, right. Because uh, they could see that that was something that was going to go by the wayside with the by the larger units that used uh, more hybrid, uh, hybrid uh, uh, lines and this type of thing. Right. And so uh, they were able to pay us a premium uh -huh. uh, for raising purebred hogs, and we switched to uh, selecting strongly for meat quality, right. for eating quality, and for palatability. Mm -hmm. And now the pork goes that we raise, and some of our beef also to primarily the restaurant trade in 
the East Coast and also the West Coast, the Napa Valley, San Francisco, Los Angeles area. So, so you basically have gone to both coasts then? Yes. Okay, so, so uh, but not only did they want to preserve, but they wanted to get a little connection with the consumer, right? Absolutely. I think that's a great point, Jim. I, I think, you know, uh, through the years, um, you know, as we, as we, fewer and fewer people on the farm, I think it's really important that those of us that are in agriculture try to stay in contact with the people that... Well, you want to be ambassadors. Exactly. We, 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 want, to, we want to show people that we're not out here trying to abuse the land and abuse our animals right, good point. just to make a living. Craig, hang on a second. We're, we got a word from our messages here. Okay, Come good. Out. So folks, stay right where we are. We'll be right back. No matter where, no matter why, the Veterinary Health Center at Kansas State University is committed to providing quality patient care to animals and exceptional customer service to their owners. From routine checkups to emergency and specialty care, our world-renowned specialists and experienced professionals are here to discover, to teach, and to heal. Let us know. How can I help? How can we help? Car Waters has what you need for all seasons for around the farm and home. Working, hunting, growing, feeding, snow removal, even fun for the kids. And a service department with experienced techs to help keep your equipment in top running condition. Tar Waters has a huge selection and the best prices. Tarwater Farm and Home, family owned and operated since 1978. They have what you need. Now another gardening tip with Annette Jackson. Fall is a great time to plant trees, shrubs, and perennials. Root development this fall means more growth with less watering next year. For faster root growth, always use Vertilone Root Stimulator. It is the only stimulator which contains IBA rooting hormone. Use Vertilone tree and shrub food after the plant has been planted for a month. Save 25% now on Jackson's homegrown hardy perennials. Let Jackson's friendly staff help you select the best plants for your landscape. That's My Farm is brought to you in part by Tall Grass Commodities. Big enough to serve, small enough to care. Welcome back, folks, to That's My Farm. I'm Jim Schroyer, and we're in luck because we're on the Craig and Amy Good Farm near Oldsburg, Kansas, and they have gone a little bit different in that they're not the big corporate farm. They have kind of a niche operation of livestock, and crops, and they put them together, and they're, they're making it work. You know, Craig, I, as, I, as I'm looking at the, the, ho the hog lot here, I see uh, durocs and I see some, some old spots. Yes. So uh, tell me a little bit about the about those spots compared to the durocs. Well, Jim, we started the spots. Um, it wasn't my original intent, but people at Heritage Foods, part of their mission, like I said earlier, was to, to save some of the more rare breeds of life, uh, farm animals, you know, that have gone by the wayside. And, I had an opportunity to buy uh, some old spots for a man that was back after the 90s, the late 90s and early 2000s, couldn't afford to feed them anymore. And I was able to go to Ohio and uh, after a lot of health checks and sure. so forth, we purchased his entire herd of old spots. They're Gloucestershire old spots. Uh -huh. They come from England originally, originated in England and they are a, uh, have a, quite a bit of back fat and they don't have as much muscle as the modern breeds of pigs. Uh -huh. But the meat quality and the, the quality and the eating ability of the pork is extremely good. Okay, great, great. And uh, of course, everybody likes Durox as well, though. Right. I mean, they're bred more for muscle. Yes, they are. They're, 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 they're a very good breed, and we've selected lines that are strong in meat quality and palatability and, and had, you know, good eating quality. So, you know, they're, they're good in that respect, but the, the old spots are just a little different. And you know they like to preserve the old breeds. Who, who knows down the road? Mm -hmm. Some genes. Some genes in those. May, old... There may be a gene. As a matter of fact, we're doing a little thing with some pancreases mm -hmm. with a company that may think that some of these old heritage breeds of livestock may have a better uh, uh, pancreas mm -hmm. to for doing some uh, genetic work in uh, maybe using it even in humans. Mm -hmm. well, well, to, diabetes. To work with diabetes. Right. right. Exactly. exactly. Mm -hmm. Okay. Folks, uh, we'll be right back after these words from our sponsor, so don't go away.
Tallgrass Commodities offers producers bulk commodities at a reasonable price with reliable service throughout the whole Midwest. To find out more about Tallgrass Commodities, visit tallgrass.us or call 785-494-8484. This hog is Hanover Hoof for meal made from U.S. soybeans. Now, one hog isn't that impressive, but suppose we add another, and another, and another. Before long, you've got billions of hungry customers around the world all clamoring for the same thing. Our soybeans. Learn more about the billion-dollar appetite of animal agriculture at beyondtheelevator.com. Brought to you by America's Soybean Farmers and their checkoff. Hello friends, I'm Ernie Rodina. And I'm Don Dawson with the Better Horses Radio Show. For over nine years, we've been bringing the Better Horses Radio Show to markets all across the Midwest. We talk about God, lots about horses. We talk about cows, we talk about horse health, we talk to top trainers, and we even talk about Roy Rogers. We are having a blast with Better Horses Radio Show and would love to take it to a market near you. So visit our website at betterhorsesradio.com and let us or your local radio station know you'd like to hear it in your area. The Better Horses Radio Show is unbelievable. That's My Farm is brought to you in part by Tall Grass Commodities. Big enough to serve, small enough to care. Folks, welcome back to That's My Farm. I'm Jim Schroyer, your host, and we have Craig Good with us here from Oldsburg, Kansas. And, you know, we talked about pigs a while ago, and, and uh, I know you've got some crops. You know, the soybeans aren't looking half bad. You know, that rain a week or so ago sure sure helped out so you know how does how do soybeans fit into your operation well jim they've, they've been a basically we use uh, in our no-till situation we wrote we never have crops uh, the same crop two years in a row right and i say never but uh, rarely never say never yeah, right. yeah never say never but so we're in a corn soybean and we use wheat occasionally when we start to get some wheat pressure right that we need to see we need to break up we'll come in with wheat but the soybeans have fit in quite nicely. Uh, it's the only cash crop besides the pigs and the cattle that we have. And so, um, you know, we use this and uh, the beans, and I've already got some of the crops sold for this, this coming fall, and we'll take those to market. And then I use the proceeds from that to bring to buy back corn or, or grain sorghum to feed the pigs and, and the cattle. And soybean meal. Right, or bean meal, yeah. right. Uh, well, you know, uh, these are these are actually looking pretty good. Uh, you know, I wouldn't be a bit surprised. You're going to be well in with 40 bushels in here. I I would have hoped that it would make somewhere in there. Yeah, yeah I, I I have learned not to predict. You know, right. I kind of wait till after this wait. But, right. uh, that's so, they, so let's, they appear like it. let's talk a little bit. Let's talk a little bit about it. So so you're going to be planting this after corn or, or grain sorghum, uh, no till. So uh, you know what what seeding rate do you shoot for and uh, that sort of thing. Well, on the soybeans, we're roughly about, a, we try to drop somewhere around 100, 140,000 beans per, uh, per acre. Right. Mm-hmm. And on our corn, uh, which we'll talk about later, I typically drop somewhere in the 25 to 26,000 seeds. Um, but, you know, and we've been, a lot of times we'll do in 10 inch rows or, or 14 inch rows with a drill. We'll plug every other row. With Your beans. Yeah. In the beans. Mm-hmm. But this year, um, actually, we're, we planted in 30 inch rows. I see I, that. I feel like my seed placement with uh, with my planter is a little bit superior sure, to sure. using with a, with a drill, and, and so that's the reason I've kind of gone back to 30 inch rows because a seed placement is a little easier to get a, a real good stand, I think, with a planter. Right. That's really important. Uh, I know. So a weed or two. Uh, I mean, I'm not trying to be critical, but I'm looking at some escapes that are herbicide resistant weeds. So weed control, uh, big issue this year? Yeah, weed control has been tough. Yeah, it really has. Uh, probably the toughest year I've had it was soybeans. And I think a lot of it's due to, you know, Palmer amaranth, you know, or some of the resistant, uh-huh. resistant herbicide resistant uh, uh, weeds that we're getting out here. And, and uh, I sprayed these beans. We've put in a good effort, but sometimes it doesn't work. And, and also, Sometimes the beans, I think, as they get a little bigger, some of the weeds are under the canopy and they right. don't get, the, the target is too small. Right, right. Well, I tell you what, we're getting the high sign from, uh, from we need to have take a break and go uh, have a word from our sponsors. So, but we've got some other crops and other part of the operation to look at. So folks, we'll be right back. Don't go away after these words from our sponsors. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. Valley Vet Supply. 
believe and supply. This is the fast track to more jobs and America's energy independence. Advanced performance is here, now. Biodiesel, America's advanced biofuel. Hey folks, Dr. Dan from Doc Talk, and y'all are well aware that I teach at Kansas State University's College of Veterinary Medicine, and on Saturday, November 8th, there's gonna be a meeting. This meeting is gonna be held for veterinarians and producers to understand the new regulations, whether it's veterinary feed directives or other regulations associated with antibiotic usage that will affect you and your veterinarian. Be sure to join me in Manhattan, Kansas on November 8th and get registered prior to that at www.ksvma.org. See you Saturday, November 8th in the Little Apple. Buying a car shouldn't be this hard. And at Brown Chevrolet Buick in Wamego, it isn't. It's actually awesome. Whether you want a new or used car or truck, Toby's team can make the deal. Even if you want to custom order a new car or truck, Toby's team can make the deal. See Toby's team at Brown Chevrolet Buick in Wamego. We're awesome. Soil is the life of a farm, and for 25 years, SureCrop Liquid Crop Nutrition has helped growers produce abundant quality crops while preserving and improving the soils they steward. SureCrop offers complete soil and plant analysis with cropping recommendations, delivery direct to your on-farm storage, and quality crop nutrition custom blended for your field. Choose SureCrop for the assurance of excellence for your soil. Call today or visit their website for more information. That's My Farm is brought to you in part by Tall Grass Commodities. Big enough to serve, small enough to care. Welcome back to That's My Farm. We're in Pottawatomie County near Oldsburg on the Craig Good Farm. And Craig, we're standing obviously in a, a patch of corn here. So right. uh, tell us how you got to this point. Uh, Jim, this is uh, actually this is our first year we planted a drought guard uh, hybrid. How do you like it? Uh, I think it stood up well this year. We, it, it had some stress this year, but it had some good times, and it went from feast or famine. Right, right. And um, our weed control was pretty good in the corn. We used uh, half a rate of bicep pre-plant. Right. Or not bicep, but it used to be that degree extra right. uh, for broadleaf and grass control, and then uh, once in crop uh, with Roundup. Mm -hmm. We also we have a, a little bit of problem with some mare's tail, so we used a, a new herbicide. Uh, called Sharpen. Right. We've got some new technology and it, it takes care of that pretty well. So we were pretty happy with our Because mare's tail starting to get a little tough. Yeah, mare's tail's tough. And uh, and especially, you know, late pre before you, you know, if you don't want to use a dicamba or 2,4-D as far as your germination problem right close to planting. And right, exactly. So Sharpen works pretty well for that for us. So tell me a little bit about your fertility program for, for your corn. Okay. Uh, because we aren't real big, some of my technology for fertilizer application is not maybe as good as I'd like it. We we put on an early uh, uh, broadcast of ammonium nitrate mm -hmm. and phosphorus, uh -huh. about 130 pounds of ammonium nitrate, and I take that back to phosphorus we put on with the planter, right. and um, we put on about 30 pounds of phosphorus uh, with the planter at the planting time. But that's all it's had, about 130 pounds of, of pre-plant uh, ammonium nitrate, and then whatever, there's eight or nine pounds or something like that in the phosphorus at, uh, with the phosphorus uh, when we, at, at planting time. Well, any, any of this good manure from your hogs? Exactly, yeah, this, this also had, uh, now we don't have enough manure to do all the acres, Right. but this particular spot here did, did not get any manure this year, but it did several years ago. Right. Okay. So we get in a rotation thing. We don't just try to manure the whole thing or the comp. It's, it's basically more manure. We compost our manure, so it's right. more just to compost. Right, okay. Well, Craig, I tell you what, I appreciate you taking time to uh, uh, talk with us. And, and uh, you folks at home, I hope you'll be joining us next week on another version of That's My Farm.
Closed captioning brought to you by Kansas Soybean Commission. The Soybean Checkoff, progress, powered by Kansas farmers.